What is happening people? It is Brian Alls with NeverSafe.com and for today's video I want to talk to you guys about how to use the safety squat bar. So about two years ago I made a video about all the benefits that I find about safety squat bar and why I think you should use it. Just made a total case for it and if you guys are interested in the benefits of it then you can find a link to that as well as the timestamps if you want to jump somewhere else in this video down in the description box below. Whether you're a power lifter, a strongman, a bodybuilder, or just a regular gym goer, the safety squat bar is always right at the top of everyone's list when it comes to the best bar to get directly after a barbell. So it is always the most used uh, specialty bar as well as the most bought, as well as the bar that everyone considers to have the most carry over to both their squat, their deadlift, their strongman training, as well as athletic ability. Some people say that they feel it in their quads, almost like a front squat, while others say that they feel it in their posterior chain, almost like a good morning. Me personally, I don't say that anyone's really wrong in any of that. I will just say that it works. Now, although there are all these terrific things about this bar and a lot of people want to use it, there's still kind of a mystery of how. Like, what do you do with those handles? Where do you place that pad? Those sorts of things. So what I thought I'd do is just give you guys a short video showing you guys a couple things to consider when it comes to the technical side of the safety squat bar and how to get the most out of it. Now, as of most of these videos, I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down. The first thing you want to consider is the pads. Where do you stick these pads? It's not like a normal squat bar and you'll see a lot of people doing different things. Here's the truth of it. If you can stick those pads on your shoulders and then remove your hands and the pads stay there, then they're probably in a perfectly good spot. Some people try to cheat this a little bit by sliding that pad further down their back, which is kind of taking away the purpose of the bar in itself. And then some people actually pull it down towards their neck or pull it higher up on their neck. And if you are doing that on purpose to do something to build your upper back strength and size, then I think that is a great thing because that is a great tool to use for that. However, if you are not intentionally doing that and you are just pulling it up on your neck, then it's probably not something you should continue doing. So when it comes to placement of this pad on your neck, it's kind of like Goldilocks. Can't be too far back, can't be too far forward. It's gotta be just kind of right. And again, a real easy way to check that is take your hands off the bar. If it stays where it is, then you're probably just about okay. Second thing I would consider when it comes to the safety squat bar is to squeeze those handles as hard as you can. This isn't like the barbell, guys. If it was a barbell, I'd tell you be squeezing the barbell as hard as possible, because like I've said in a million of my other videos, the body likes to work synergistically. So if you can't open a jar, squeeze the jar. You'll be amazed at how much just linking up your system will give you more power output, and the same thing's gonna be going on here. Personally, I squeeze those handles as hard as possible. Some people will actually push those things in some people will pull out on the handles. I actually don't do either one of those. I try to engage my upper back by just trying to hold my shoulder blades and rhomboids very, very tight like I would in a normal squat. However, if you're not engaging your upper body in some sort of way, then when this thing bucks, because I guarantee it is going to buck, and when it does, if you're not engaged, it is going to fold you. So I would highly recommend trying to leave your fingerprints in those handles as well as engaging your upper back. The third and probably most controversial point of this entire video is what do you do with those handles? You'll see some people shoving up when they're coming out of the holes. You'll see other people pulling down. And I can say for sure that you can use this bar in a multitude of different ways. So I'm not gonna go and say that someone is doing something incorrectly. What I will say is for most lifters, most athletes, most people who are watching this video, you're gonna be better off just leaving that bar exactly where it is when you release your hands, wherever it sits on your shoulders, that is exactly where you want those handles to stay throughout the entire movement. I will say if you hit the bottom and you shove directly up coming out of the hole, then that is absolutely going to make that squat feel a lot lighter. It's taking the weight off your back. Again, making the bar obsolete for what the bar was made to do. And uh, I probably can't recommend that in virtually any other situation than if you have some sort of weird, obscure injury. However, you will see some people come out of the hole with an SSB SSB bar, you can't say SSB bar. That's like saying ATM machine. I really didn't think I was gonna mess that up. But if you are pulling down on those handles, coming out of the hole, it is going to round your upper back. Now, like I said earlier, if you're doing this on purpose for some sort of variation that's supposed to stick more stress on your upper back, then I think it is great and this is a terrific tool for doing that. However, if you are not intending to be pulling down those handles and you are not intending to have a rounded back, then I would absolutely say do not do that. So basic idea while you are squeezing those handles as hard as you can, try to keep them in the exact same position throughout the entire lift as where you started. Don't try to jerk them up or push them down coming out of the hole unless you're intending 
to do that for a purpose. Fourth thing that I think is important about the safety squat bar is when you are going to descend with this thing, it is already going to try to keep you more upright. However, it is going to buck at some point because when you come out of the hole, if your hips rise any faster than the rest of your body, that bar is going to respond and toss you forward. That's why you see so many people get kind of that big ramp when they're on their way up, but you can kind of combat this by initiating your descent by pushing your knees out instead of your butt back. Now, like I just said, it's going to throw you forward sometime during this rep. So your game is gonna to try to stay as upright and erect as possible. Now, the easiest way to do that is by pushing your knees out to begin your descent, almost like you were a ballerina. Now, trust me, you are not gonna go up on the edges of your feet, and if you do, do not do that. However, as your knees start pushing out, eventually your butt will start to push back, your hips will break, and you will go into your squat, except it will be at a much later point when those hips break, sticking you just in a more upright position throughout the entire thing, which is gonna be much better off, because when this thing decides to throw you forward, if you are already butt back in position, then you're probably just gonna get stable. All right, so the fifth thing I think you should consider when using a safety squat bar is to shove your back into that pad as soon as you're coming out of the hole. Very similar to in a front squat where your first motion should be driving your elbows straight up in the air. Same thing here. As soon as you come out of the hole, I'd be pushing my back into that pad. Now, do not get that confused with snapping your chin up. If you lift your chin in the bottom of a squat, you're actually sticking yourself in a much worse position of actually achieving that rep. Instead, you should still be keeping your neck neutral. If anything, you should be packing your chin back, almost like you're trying to give yourself like a double chin, and then you should be driving your shoulder blades, your traps, your rhomboids, everything back into that pad as soon as you're coming out of the hole. Sixth thing I'd probably tell you about using the safe squat bar is to use it in a multitude of ways. Now you can absolutely just replace your normal squat variations with a safety squat bar and there are tons of lifters out there who have done that exclusively and I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. If you switch completely over to the safety squat bar, it is not going to hurt your strength whatsoever. All that I'd say is just make sure that you don't get rusty with a barbell uh, so you might need like a week or two weeks of training with it before you go for your next squat PR. But training with a safety squat bar, if it helps your old man shoulders or you are post-surgery and you can't really get into a back squat position, then I think it is an excellent, excellent tool to use altogether. In fact, I know a lot of lifters that have zero shoulder problems whatsoever, but they still use that exclusively just because they find better carryover to their regular squat than using just the squat alone. Now, because of the yoke design of this bar, you can use it for a lot of no-handed things as well. Everything from no-handed squats or no-handed lunges to no-handed step-ups. These are all things that can challenge your core in a completely different ways because the second that you take your hands off the bar, it definitely changes the game a lot. You can also use it for something like a Hatfield squat or Bulgarian split squats if you do not want to focus too much on the balance of it. And as long as you're not really pulling on those handles, then I have no problem with you doing that at all. Another variation that I choose to love and hate is the hands wide SSB because it feels very similar to an overhead squat that is just a little bit lower. However, I know most people out there are not capable of getting to an overhead squat position, myself pretty much included. So this is a great way to kind of train those muscles and make your regular squat a ton harder just simply by changing where your hands go. And then finally, its design allows you to flip the thing backwards so you can do front squats with it if you're not capable of getting into a front rack position. And you can use it for other things if you have the Elite FTS yoke bar because you can unscrew the handles and then allows you to do stuff like JM presses or tricep extensions, which I use a lot coming back from my shoulder issues. And then finally, guys, my seventh point about the safety squat bar is which one to buy. Now, there are two main companies that I will support their safety squat bar. The first of which is Elite FTS, their yoke bar. They do not like calling it a safety squat bar because of the pad design. They say it is more of a yoke, so that's why they call it an SS yoke bar. Now, Rogue does have an SSB or a safety squat bar, which I've used for a lot of years, and I absolutely love that one as well. I know other people have talked about Titan Fitness, and I have no idea about their safety squat bar. I do know about some of their other equipment that I've personally seen fall apart, so I do not stick my athletes on it or myself. Now, when it comes down to comparing two, I will say that in my opinion, the Elite FTS Yoke Bar is of a good bit higher quality than the Rogue SSB. The finish of the bar, the weight of the bar, the way the bar feels, and especially the pad, the pad, actually holds up. The bad, the worst part about the Rogue SSB is that the pad literally collapses. It's almost like pool noodles, like swimming pool noodles. That's almost what the pad inside there is. And if you have people regularly squatting five, six, seven, eight hundred pounds on that thing, 
pool noodles do not hold up. I, now conversely, I can say with the Elite FTS one, we have thrown some very serious weight on that and it hasn't even broken in yet. However, I will say that breaking down pad and how the Rogue SSB sits lower on your shoulders makes it a much better bar if you're going for a one or two type of squat maximum on this. Uh, I will definitely say when I switched over to the SS Yoke Bar from Elite FTS, my numbers definitely dropped comparatively to where they were on the Rogue SSB. And again, it's just because that pad sits up higher, the every inch that something gets higher, it changes those angles and it definitely makes it tougher. Another note about the pads, if you are a smaller male or a female, a lot of times the Rogue SSB pads are a little bit too spread far apart, so you end up getting a little wonky or offset in order to actually use the bar. The Elite FTS pads are definitely larger, and I'm not saying that they're still going to fit perfectly on a small frame female or a small frame male, but it is definitely better. It, it covers more room. However, at the same time, it's not such small room that people with big fat heads haven't been able to use it, or at least none of the big fat heads that come to my gym. So when it comes down to performance of the two bars, I will say if you're going for one or two rep max, I would highly recommend the Rogue SSB bar. If you are looking for actual training effect, carryover and something that's going to last longer, I would highly recommend the Elite FTS Yoke Bar. Now, guys, I'm not making any money on any SSB, whether you go one company, other company, or don't go with any companies, I don't care. All I'm saying is a lot of gyms are showing up with these things, so I just want to give you guys a good idea of how to actually use it so you guys didn't get intimidated or feel silly or stupid if uh, you wanted to give it a try. Anyway, guys, that is all that I have for you today. I hope that some of you will find this helpful, and if that bar has been sitting up on that wall kind of being a little bit scary, I hope you do decide to pull it down because trust me, the carryover to other progress that you can make with your lifts or the strongman lifts or athletic endeavors is vastly, vastly underrated. The SSB is probably, if I were to start a brand new gym after I had like barbells and plates and normal stuff, the SSB is the very first specialty bar that I would absolutely buy. So I do thank you guys so much for sitting through this thing. Remember, I do still have, I think, two slots left for the deadlift seminar on May 16th. If you guys are interested, make sure you email me at neverstate at gmail.com. Also, if you're looking for a personalized program, use the same email. Just tell me you're looking for a personalized program. We will set it all up, guys. I thank you so much. Those types of things are exactly what make these videos possible. So I thank you. I really, really can't say it enough. So I will catch up with you guys later in the week. Until I do go out to something amazing, we'll keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other. Please. Nice. I'll see you then.